Joining us, award-winning investigative reporter John Sullivan, opinion contributor for The Hill. John, good to have you with us. Great reporting. Great to be with is, you, Lou. Thank you. Uh, as always. Uh, let's, let's start with uh, first uh, today, the, the reporting yeah. that uh, Schiff and, uh, and Reynolds were, uh, uh, Simpson were uh, together in Aspen. Uh, how much should we make of it? Well, uh, if you remember a couple of years ago, Democrats made a very big point of the fact that Adam Schiff, uh, excuse me, uh, uh, Devin Nunez, exercising his normal oversight right. authority, went to the White House to get some facts, something we didn't see a lot in the hearing today. But he went to the White House to get some facts about unmasking, and then Adam Schiff called him on the carpet, said it was corrupt, it, uh, in, it ruined the integrity of the investigation, mm -hmm. forced uh, Devin Nunez to go through a, a, uh, an investigation, and temporarily recuse himself mm -hmm. from the Russia. Uh, a probe. Well, now we have uh, Adam Schiff engaging in the same behavior he was excoriating. He meets with Glenn Simpson, one of the most important fact witnesses of the entire Russia case. He's the intersection of the Clinton campaign and the Justice Department. Bruce Orr, Christopher Steele, Hillary Clinton, all connected through him. And he has this contact, and he doesn't tell the committee. So if it was good for the goose named uh, Nunez, it should have been good, uh, good for the gander named uh, Schiff. And that didn't happen. He didn't uh, notify the committee. And you're starting to hear Republicans raise, uh, raise heck about it. Well, they're going to raise heck, but they've been doing that for really two years and uh, never came close to raising hell, which is really <laughs> what is necessary to defend this president uh, and to uh, defend truth itself. Uh, you were talking about Devin Nunes, who's, a, I think we all agree, a, a hero in this, uh, uh, this sordid, monstrous uh, witch hunt uh, that's been conducted against the president. Uh, but we also have to bring into play the name Paul Ryan, because he yeah. is the one who played uh, uh, games with Shift and let him drive uh, that narrative uh, in the face of evidence that Nunes had collected that uh, substantiated his uh, views and positions uh, on the president uh, yeah. throughout. Correct. Listen, there was a, there was an evolution at the very end of Paul Ryan's a tenure at speaker. I think he very late in the process. I think at the beginning he thought Devin Nunez and Jim Jordan and Mark Meadows were off on some uh, goose chase. And I think very late in the summer and into the fall, I know I talked to him about it. Mm -hmm. He told me directly for the first time he believed there were vice abuses. He wasn't a believer in that. But as more and more evidence yeah. came through, as his lawmakers were more determined than he to get to the truth, he finally came around to that position. Well, I'm a, I am a I am a trusting and open hearted soul. Uh, I think that Paul Ryan was lying to you throughout, as he <laughs> lied to his entire conference and to this president throughout. Yeah. He betrayed them uh, and, in my judgment, the country. Uh, there is no, uh, to me, there is absolutely no excuse for his conduct and his willful uh, betrayal of this president. Uh, let, let's turn to uh, sure. further the, the, uh, the, the idea uh, yeah. that Special Counsel Mueller, uh, that you reported, it goes back to 2002 and the way in yeah. which he was uh, acting without integrity uh, right. and permitting uh, uh, he, well. those with him on his team uh, to do so in, fl in flagrant violation of the regulations uh, uh, for FISA surveillance warrants. Yeah. So uh, this is a very important story for one reason. If you remember when Devin Nunez and, and Jordan and Meadows, all those guys started raising questions about the FISA, people like Rod Rosenstein and James Comey said, there can't be any abuses. There's such a process in place that catches everything. Right. You don't appreciate how much work we put into it. Well, guess what? That process allowed 75 FISAs between 1999 and 2002 to be submitted to the FISA court with false, inaccurate, or omitted information. The very same allegation that we now see in the Carter Page um, uh, FISA of 2016. So it really debunks a lot of those con the trust us concerns, trust the process concerns. Those processes only work if people tell the truth in those documents. There's a pattern in practice before 2016 of that going on during Director Mueller's term as FBI director. And now there's that same pattern in practice in the Carter Page uh, FISA. And that's what should concern all of us. Listen, Donald Trump's a very powerful man, but what about all the people who don't have his lawyers, don't have the congressional oversight? This could be going on daily to everyday Americans. That's why it's so important to stay focused on it. Without question. And indeed, uh, with a president who is uh, being subverted uh, by that very process and becomes yeah. the first president to our knowledge to ever be spied upon by his own uh, national security uh, uh, agencies, including that, of course, of the, uh, uh, of the FBI. Right. Uh, it's, it is, uh, do you think that there will ever be any accounting uh, for those abuses? 
Yeah, I think the first thing that's happening, and there's a very big moment this week, and I know you've seized on it, but not many people have. Uh, Richard Burr, Senate yeah. Intelligence Committee chairman, came out and said what Devin Nunez said a, a year ago, two separate committees, mm -hmm. two different chambers. There is no, none, no evidence of collusion. Getting that off the table allows Washington, official Washington, to begin to focus now on, well, how did we get that narrative? Who made that false story? Mm -hmm. What went on? What abuses occurred in the FBI? And I think that moment, that tipping point has arrived. And I think with the in inspector general's report coming out soon and a new sheriff in town named Bill Barr, the new attorney general, mm -hmm. I think you'll see some real accountability in 2019. I'm hearing a lot of things behind the scenes of that accountability beginning to set up. Well, it would be a wonderful thing to behold and to uh, and to witness. Uh, you you mentioned uh, the narrative that has been driven here. Uh, yeah. One of those people, obviously driving it, was the ranking member of yes. the Senate Intelligence Committee, Richard Burr, sitting right next to him, uh, right. and that's Senator Mark Warner. His yeah. role in all of this is complex uh, and I think deserves great examination. Do you agree? I agree. If you remember back in the summer, I had a story where Mark Warner was secretly communicating right. for a, from before a lawyer with a Russian guy named uh, back Waldman, right. back channel, trying to get information back and forth to the uh, FBI director. Very weird behavior, just like the weird behavior we see with Adam Schiff not having a radar and not uh, staying away from Glenn Simpson at Aspen. I think the big problem for Warner and Schiff is when all these facts come out and the president declassifies all those documents, right. and I know he will. Their statements of the last two years are going to be compared to the final facts of the Mueller investigation and the declassified documents. And I think some people are going to have some serious explaining to do. Right. You, even a few members of the uh, Lilliputian uh, uh, radical Dems on, this, on the House Judiciary Committee, uh, they've got some uh, explaining to do as well, I think. And, uh, and certainly their performance today, I, one would think, would require an apology. John it's Solomon, a, you get the yeah. last word here. Well, I was going to say, uh, I, I just talked to someone as was coming in the building here that, you know, there's a fine line between oversight and overreach. And I think you saw that line get crossed a few times in the hearing today. Mm -hmm. We did get some useful information, but we saw a lot of bad behavior. That's not the behavior that American public wants. They want to see what President Trump did on the State of the Union address, act like an adult.